contact to get a copy of that draft EIR. Um, the project has been reduced. It will be a 12-story, 120-foot project with um, one level below grade parking, 242 dwelling units, and a 232-room hotel. That's over here on uh, Market, uh, Taylor, and Kirk Street. I also have a notice of environmental impact report available, which I'm having trouble getting out of planning for 1028 Market Street, which is a 33,000 um, uh, square foot project currently, and they want to build uh, 186 residential units above the building they have there now. There's also, which I'm also having trouble getting out of UCSF, the availability of the draft EIR um, for uh, a re new research facility at uh, uh, General Hospital and a blue parking garage. I also have a copy of the draft EIR for uh, Hastings long-term plan, um, and I'm reading that. I have the geotech report from that plan, and Dave Stewart is coming to our main meeting for a presentation on the draft EIR. And what I like about it more than anything else is it will increase housing, student housing on site, which will take students out of housing in the Tenderloin and South of Market, putting them on site, which will open up that housing to community people to move up and upgrade their housing, which allows people in shelters to move into the lower grade housing, which allows homeless people to move into shelters, which is a great way to cut to increase housing without building anymore. And um, I have a, a, both a letter of termination and an amended letter that authorizes a, 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 build, a project at uh, 139, 149 6th Street, which is currently a residential hotel, and they want to turn into group housing um, for the district attorney's office for probation um, housing for nonviolent criminal reentry program and a whole lot more. Thank you. This is what I go through every month. I have a lot of uh, legislation, but for time constraints, I will just submit it to Dennis. Thank you. All right, thank you, Morris. Uh, does everybody have any questions about the mind-blowing report? Um, and it shows that we have a lot of things going on. list of, uh, that we got in the we got with the agenda of the... Yeah, well, we're going to get to that now. Okay. Uh, there, uh, there's going to be front of uh, hey, the next page uh, after the green one. There's, there's going to be six items uh, that are going to be on the Planning Commission's agenda, and they're very important because these are current um, uh, residential SRO uh, um, locations uh, or units that are going to... Uh, the owners want to turn them into tourist hotels and want them to be transferred over to uh, uh, to uh, the post site of 361 Turk and 145 Leavenworth. Uh, when uh, the community was involved in the process of dealing with these two parking lots, uh, this was taken off the table, now it's being put back on the table, which I find kind of appalling because of the fact that if it was, if they're going to do this kind of stuff, that should have been all the issues should have been addressed at the time when uh, the community was addressing uh, the project. Now you're bits and pieces after the fact, and uh, and it, it kind of you know we organize. We can't keep on organizing uh, back and forth. It loses. We start losing our momentum when uh, things like this happen. Uh, the uh, the planning commission don't quite get the, uh, this issue because they need, this is an informational hearing uh, because the, uh, the planning commission had all kinds of questions about this. It's never happened before. Uh, this topic of change, taking off the, uh, we, have a, uh, we have a conversion uh, ordinance that this is kind of goes against and uh, they would have to do a, uh, um, they would have to uh, get a conditional use or authorization to do it. And um, 
you know, it kind of makes this, these uh, apartments, uh, I don't know if, if they're going to be ch cheaper for these residents or what. I mean, what's going to happen to the current residents? Well, we, we already know that, the, the, that it's not really comparable housing, even though that's what the law it's says. What? And they're trying to say that it's comparable replacement housing, but the group housing that they're talking about building, yeah, it's the smart. parking lots are actually, you know, they're, they're smaller, but they're actually a lot more expensive, too. So it's really not the same thing. And, and also, um, what we want to say is even though they're trying to say that that's going to be replacement housing, um, because it's been entitled, those two projects were entitled, uh, the developer is now actually trying to sell those properties with the entitlement. So the question is, are, is there even, and, and when is anything actually going to actually be even built in those parking lots? So we're losing the housing out of these hotels conceivably to, to, with, with, to, with a to, maybe to eventually some something sort? will be. And eventually something may get built in a parking lot somewhere. Right. right. <laughs> My understanding <laughs> is, that, is that they're arguing that the that they'll replace uh, uh, the housing loss from the, the commercial the hotels by contracting with Ford's properties and we're, we're building the the, uh, the buildings at uh, at uh, one uh, forty five Leavenworth. And uh, and I, also my understanding that, that a percentage of, of those uh, units are going to be uh, reserved for first responders, like, you know, cops and you know, and, and people like that. And also, there's I think three units that are going to be available to uh, people who are working for the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. But like well, I said, that's right now, I know, I know. I, I, it's, that's it's, the way it was entitled, but now the developer is actually trying to so sell it. So it's on the This is what's going to be on the planning commission now yeah. about the first responders or new counselors. Okay. So our concern is. Uh, should the community be starting to, to uh, uh, organize around these issues because uh, you're basically uh, taking away housing from existing residents that live in uh, SROs and basically uh, taking away their housing? It, it, I, don't, I don't know how to say it any more simpler than that. Uh, it doesn't say what you're going to do with the uh, tenants. Um, so I really have a concern about that. Uh, two, uh, uh, Buildings have not even been built, and they're already deciding this this motion. So it would be maybe more uh, helpful if the buildings were built and then do the motion, so that at least they would have a place to be transferred into instead of a piece of parking lot. Um, Otto. Yes, you should organize one. I'll make a motion. Gary, Gary. I just would say um, that I think that if we focus on a event or a project. We should focus that before any decision is made on taking housing out of existing, that the housing should be built to replace it. So, um, if both of them, uh, take what the auto's motion is, and I'd like to put something in there to make that part of the motion. Okay, so uh, Mars is, wants to create a motion to tell the planning commissioners that when this goes in front of them, that uh, they should not approve it until there's an actual building for the uh, tenants to move into. Uh, and this is really goes to what uh, our organization had as one of its uh, ground rules when we review a project is, uh, is it basically uh, um, moving people out of their houses uh, and is, you know, because you know, this is what this actually says it's doing. Um, and not necessarily building replacement housing until some time later, which doesn't help. Um, and uh, so um, I think you kind of got the gist of it as far as, and you can use some of the language on the, uh, the, the planning commission, commission has on their agenda, um, how many units that are being displaced. Um, so is there any discussion uh, on Marvis's motion? Uh. Can I, can I second it? Or? Yeah. Okay, I second it. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, so if there's no discussion, then we, uh, we can have a yay, nay, or no. Uh, so all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody say no? Anybody abstain? All right. Uh, dogs abstain. <laughs> Just to make it fair, right? She said aye. She said aye. All right. All right. Um, you second? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, Okay, uh, is there any other stuff? Okay, so what I want to do is briefly go down uh, with ounces on the agenda, then we go on to door prizes, uh, the best part. Uh, so, uh, uh, the uh, blue, uh, the last sheet here, the blue one, 
mentions uh, that we're going to be having a uh, uh, Central City Democrats is going to be having a uh, candidate meet and greet. We're going to have the U.S. Senate, the, the House of Representatives, the State Assembly, Superior Court judges, the DCC, and candidates and the ballot measures uh, next Tuesday at an event. Um, did you get the agenda? Okay. <laughs> She's Maybe just look at me with a blank face. Okay, so you have it. Okay, and so uh, everybody here is welcome to that uh, if, uh, uh, on, if they wish to go, and uh, that's why I attached it to the agenda. Uh, and um, uh, next issue is uh, so you get a chance to meet the candidates, and we've also got this, org this organization will be celebrating its 10th anniversary. And then. Um, just talked about the uh, planning commission hearing, which was the uh, six items. Uh, that's also on the, the uh, under announcements. And then, um, what we always do um, at uh, um, when we uh, end our meetings, we uh, want to mention that uh, we'd like to adjourn the meetings of those who passed away in uh, the last month or so in District Six. Um, as a way to remember them because a lot of times they don't get into the newspapers or you know we don't, uh, they don't get uh, uh, recognized very well and uh, you know it happens and uh, um, yes they, you know, you so know, we lost the guy on the Tom Liddell advisory board his name was Dave Seller he lives at the Maria building it's like on um, Park Street I think yeah. was that the guy that was on the team BC4? no and it appears to be a suicide Seller? the guy or it might have been a suicide, they're not sure. The, the guy, he went in to get an operation, they fixed the pain in his back. He wound up being disabled and put in a wheelchair. This goes back to about 2010. It's just, and then it's, I don't know, he's like 50 years old. Okay. It's just crappy. All right, is there anybody else that uh, knows somebody that's worth mentioning now? Recently passed away. All right, um, so can I have a motion to adjourn? Does anybody have any announcements? We'll start with that before I adjourn. So any other announcements? Uh, talk about a meeting that's coming up in the next month. TDC residents, um, there is a uh, general meeting this Friday at Bodecker Park, um, 11 to 2. That's for TDC residents. I know there's some here present, so I just want to say <laughs> I wouldn't kick anybody here out if they should. Well, you can. It's in a public building. It's hard to say. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else? Any yeah. other? Okay. Uh, all right. So I make a motion to adjourn. Um, now we get in. Do you need a second? I second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Now what we're going to do is uh, we, everybody was given blue tickets. Blue tickets. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our esteemed uh, uh, lawyer to be possibly judge to pull the tickets because that makes them a neutral party. Uh, you can't get any better uh, person than a, to be a, an attorney. You can say who you are, too, if you like. Sure. If I can just uh, introduce myself. I'm not going to campaign here, but uh, my name is Victor Wong. I have uh, a couple of hats. I'm the deputy director of API Legal Outreach. We're a nonprofit legal service at 7th Admission. We provide uh, free and sliding skill service in the areas of domestic violence, elder law, uh, elder abuse, immigration, eviction defense, immigration. We, do, uh, we have employers that speak all the different Asian languages and Spanish. We have two Latino attorneys as well and staff. So if anybody needs services, we're right next to the Good Hotel at 1121 Mission across from that big federal building. Um, the other hat that I wear, I serve on the city's police commission. We have our meetings on Wednesday nights and I because towards the end of your meetings, I'm not going to take up a lot of time, but if folks want to stay afterwards and ask me questions about, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening with our police force. There's a lot of uh, issues. Well, I think the one issue we, we seem to, the last two police commission meetings we had in the Tenderloin were right. hijacked, and we like to right. have a meeting where right. it's, it's, it's addressing the concerns of the Tenderloin and not, we understand that you're a citywide <laughs> entity, but you can have issues I, I don't unfortunately you know you got to go so we'd to, like the police to stop shooting people under questionable circumstances <laughs> so that we can have our meeting yes yeah, so we have our meetings I, yeah, I, I understand <laughs> you know, tell the whole to their guts so we can have actual community issues addressed at our meetings right. when they come to our neighborhood we're <laughs> very the last two times it's been hijacked we're very aware of the police commission that we owe you a couple of meetings 
issues. I know that the president of our commission, Susie Loftus, has scheduled a couple of smaller meetings, and, and it's one of the reasons why I come here. Uh, I also have a connection with District 6. My partner is uh, Chief of Staff for Supervisor Jane Kim, so she gets on my case if I don't get into the District 6 community. So I'm happy to come here. I'm happy to go to other meetings, meet with folks informally, which is a better way than you coming to the Police Commission where you're limited to two minutes of public comments. And I think it's our duty as commissioners to come out to the community and actually listen. I think that would be April, wouldn't it? I'm sorry? Your wife? My wife? Chief of Staff and Jane? Yeah. yeah. April? Ivy. 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 Oh. Ivy. The mean one. <laughs> I, I was just saying, <laughs> not watching you because that's, that's us taping. Oh, no. It's going on, <laughs> it's going on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, okay. I'm happy to stick around and answer any questions, but I'm also All happy right. to help with your time. Yeah, because yeah, every time we invite people, we, they can always stick around after the meeting if, if there are people that have special questions that right. they don't want to talk about, if, uh, if they have personal issues or something. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with uh, get the poll. Okay, now uh, everybody's got numbers, so the last three digits. Uh, one, one, three, six. Yay! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to check numbers. Yeah, I